What can Ineos and Adam Yates do when Tane Pagacha is like this? This was stage seven of the UAE Tour last week. Didn't get around to making a video. I'm trying to make amends. Pagacha was in the lead by 14 seconds ahead of Lassov and 17 seconds ahead of Adam Yates on GC with teammates close behind. If you don't know Jabel Hafeet, you should. They use it in the UAE Tour every year. This was last year, <laughs> very close to a carbon copy of this year's. Adam Yates was in a time deficit after the TT. He had to attack Pagacha, well, early enough. It was like 30 seconds last year. Couldn't drop him. Pagacha dusted him in the sprint. This year, Pagacha had some reinforcements. Bennett and Almeida and an on-form Micah to help him control this stage. And the breakaway wasn't a threat. It was like lead-out men, I think, Vermeersh and Merku. But the question was, what could Ineos do on this climb. It's 11 k, 7.5%, takes around 26 minutes for the winner. And the answer is Ineos with the team they had really couldn't do anything to help Yates. Plab did a really good job, but in terms of setting a hard pace, he wasn't able to do that. They were completely reliant on Intermarche and Hurt and Tarame. I don't know what happened with them on this stage. And Bora Hansgrohe. Bora Hansgrohe had Vlasov and Hindley. They were close on GC, so they made Conrad pace. But the problem is, Conrad might not be pacing at the pace Yates wants. Yates in 2020 did her feet like 6.4 plus was per kilo for 26 minutes. Absurd time. And whilst per kilo, Yates is the master of it, but he can't do that from the base. Someone else needs to pace for him to make the race as difficult as he wants to. And the group is still large, 4 or 5 Ks into the climb because... They do this stage so easy before this climb. And with 7Ks to go, UAE attack with Micah and Adam Yates is left in a difficult position. He's got no teammates immediately to close it. He maybe doesn't realize Plap is on his team because he moves to the right and blocks Plap trying to get to Micah's wheel and pace, making Plap's life more difficult. I don't know what Yates was looking around for, but he's got Pagacha glued to his wheel and Pagacha has a stronger burst than Yates. Ineos basically have to use their last man, Plap, to try and pace back Rafael Micah. And then once that happens, UAE, knowing that Yates has got the time deficit after the TT, put George Bennett and Micah on the front to go basically Skytrain mode after the Micah attack. And every inch closer they get to the finish is a win for Pagacha because he's got a better sprint than Yates. And also they can dictate the pace that they want to do. Pagacha, if they were going too hard, would get on the radio straight away and be like, knock it off a bit. So Yates at this point, 6.3 Ks to go, literally can't do anything. Into Marche with Hurt and Tarame, I thought would launch it and help him a little bit inadvertently. They weren't able to. So now it's George Bennett setting the pace that Pagacha's happy with. And I know it it looks deceiving, but these guys are still going so fast on this climb. A draft still matters. It's lost to Pagacha on this climb last year, but he still did more watts per kilo because Pagacha was sitting in his draft on the climb. And so Yates, with no teammates able to pace, is beholden to hoping maybe Hindley attacks or paces, trying to do a 1-2 for Bora Hansgrohe. That wasn't able to happen either. And this is why Pagacha is so good. It's because he will always be able to knock out 6.25 for 25, 26 on her feet. 6.3 watts per kilo, always. Even in hot conditions like this, with the stage so easy beforehand, with the team setting the pace he wanted, he obviously still felt good. So there was no chance with his legs like this that Yates could just attack away and not have Pagacha in his wheel. And I think Pagacha right there with that attack was kind of letting Yates know that. And as we get into under 4Ks to go, yes, there's bonus seconds left, but it's getting do or die for Yates if he wants to gain back, say, 10 or 14 seconds on Pagacha to take out the GC of UAE till he gets into the big ring He's pretty much forecasting he's about to attack here out of the saddle, a lower cadence whilst Pagatch is still in the small ring and eventually does attack. And I've been thinking about this for a few days now, watched the climb back a few times, and I'm just not sure there's anything Yates could have done differently. With, it, with no team to really set a hard, hard pace, or even to do what Taramai did for Hirt on Jabal Jais, he did seven watts per kilo for 90 seconds to at least put people under pressure before trying an attack. He's attacking off UAE's pace that Pagach is comfortable with. Pagach snaps to his wheel in 10 seconds, got the draft now, and there's not really much he could have done. Like, it's tried to say, oh, he attacked earlier, but attacking in the face of Micah, Bennett, Almeida, either closed by them gradually and maybe even lose time, 
or Pogacar is going to be fresh and snap onto his wheel, which is what happened here. It was in the last 3.5 k's to go, so Pogacar just snapped onto his wheel, and now Pogacar is comfortable. Whilst his teammates are being brought back, Almeida with Bilbao and Micah with the Vlasov group behind. So Yates is now in a difficult position where he's like, if I stop pacing, his teammates are going to come back, and then they can either set the pace again that he's comfortable with, or they'll attack me. And that's actually exactly what happens with Joao Almeida, who was on quick step last year uh, in this race, and now has joined Pagacha on UA Team Emirates. He attacks. The only thing I would have done if I was Yates is maybe just be like, I'm not closing it, and see if Pagacha would have been happy with Almeida, because who Almeida's close on GC. See if, um, if Pagacha was happy that Almeida went and took uh, the GC of UAE Tour. Maybe he would have, uh, but it, that would have been funny to watch. Instead, Yates closed it, and the race is done at this point. I don't know why Almeida was... Obviously, Almeida should go on the front and just pace, and Pagacha tells him to do that. And there's like one last little pinch before a downhill, so the climb doesn't actually finish where the stage ends. You really, if you want to drop somebody, you need to have done it almost before this point. There's this last surge, Yates does a full gas effort and is almost done by the end of this crest. Did he, let me know down below. Do you think he had Bagatra under pressure here? Do you think if Yates had had a team that could have paced this climb at 6.5 or at least set him up for an attack, he could have dropped Pagacha? He couldn't. They get to the descent section and this race is a wrap. So this stage is just put it down in the in the annals of how advantageous it is to have the incumbent advantage on GC after a time trial because the, the ball is in the other rider's court and they have to be so much better than you on the climb. They have to have a team to at least set them up or do something. Kvyatkovsky and co. weren't able to do that despite Plap's pretty unexpectedly good effort. And this is a carbon copy of the finish last year. I could have probably shown you the same tape. Began to taking the stage and taking the UAE Tour GC again with a revamped UAE team who looked a, a lot better than what he had in support with Formula and Co. last year, where he was pretty much isolated after Coos attack with about five kilometers to go in this climb. I guess food for thought for Ineos, Bernal out. I got no idea what they're going to do in the Tour de France. Yates probably will be the guy they send. But here's the stage results. Pagacha winning the stage ahead of Yates, I think his second or third in a row time. He's won on Jabel Hafeet. Yates second, Bill Bilbao third, Carlos Verona dropping Vlasov, pretty surprising on Jabella feet. Bilbao also sneaking into third on GC. The man who Bahrain didn't ride for in Valenciana on GC. Surprise to me then, and I think even more surprising now. Yates ended up doing around 6.3 watts per kill on the climb. Pagacha, just a little bit less for over 26 minutes. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you with the Paranese highlights later. Ciao.